I wonder if you'd believe this as a solution to the Aboriginal problem. Herd the worst of the Aborigines into one area, then put a chemical in their water that sent them sterile. In time, there'd be none of them left. Well, that solution has been put forward by none other than one of the Premier's closest friends, West Australian mining magnate, Lang Hancock. Those that have been assimilated into you know, earning good living or earning wages amongst the civilised areas that have been accepted into society and they have accepted society and can handle society, I'd leave them well alone. The ones that are no good to themselves and can't accept things, the half-caste, and this is where most of the trouble comes, I would dope the water up so that they were sterile and would breed themselves out in future, and that would solve the problem. We rounded people up into our own concentration camps. In fact, what we have done from the original invasion to now is constantly reduce Aboriginal people to a subhuman status. The policy says you're a black Aboriginal Australian. You're not wanted on this earth. Behind this million dollar view is the other Australia, a secret battleground where the first people of Australia fought the invading British. This was their land, which they defended bravely and with ingenuity, but they had no guns and were defeated. In 1838, the Sydney Monitor reported, it was resolved to exterminate the whole race of blacks in that quarter. And this is how many of the survivors live today. This is Eric El Kedra, who works at the health centre in the Aboriginal community of Umbladawatch, some 200 miles from Alice Springs in the Northern Territory. Ah, uh, yeah, I moved, moved in here last year. Another family is living in one house, maybe 20 in one house, or 15 in another. Some living outside. Do you have a kitchen in your house? No. No kitchen? Yeah, I have to make a fire outside. Yeah. You got a fire there, wood, wood outside. No electricity. No electricity, yeah, no. You got water? Yeah, I used to tap out here. And you don't have a shower or anything no, like no, that? No shower. So it's just that one outside tap? Yeah. So to wash the kids, they've got to stand out of the tap? Yeah, uh, get a hose. You hose the kids? Yeah, hose, put a hose yeah. up. Oh. Shouldn't be like this, should it? No. no. It's a rich country. Yeah, it's rich. For some. You have a right to certain things. You're paying your tax. Yeah, I'm paying my tax. But I'm living in a tin shed. Here you are living with your family here, without a kitchen, tap outside, no electricity. And just over there, there's what they call a government business manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's got... 18 air conditions. Yeah, you should have given me one then. <laughs> yeah. This is the suburb of Barton, named after the first Prime Minister of Australia, Edmund Barton, whose act of Parliament in 1901 became known as the White Australia Policy. The doctrine of the equality of man, said Barton, was never intended to apply to those who weren't British and white-skinned. Barton made no mention of a people who had lived here for thousands of years, the longest human presence on earth. They were deemed barely human, unworthy of recognition in the new suburban utopia. They are Australia's secret. This film is a journey into that secret country, my homeland. It will describe not only the uniqueness of the first Australians, but their trail of tears and betrayal and resistance from one utopia to another.